Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to bring the proceedings to a beginning, and we will begin with the national anthem and the territorial song to be followed by the invocation. <laughs> This territory, may we ask three things of thee. Courage for our great leaders, that they may rule our destiny. We ask for wisdom for our people, that we may live in harmony. And understanding for all children, so they may cherish this legacy. Oh, how radiant are your daughters, and how wealthy are your sons. Your beach is both your beauty, and your success is second to none. Green and brilliant are your hillsides, they replenish all Virgin Islands, your qualities can never be denied. Oh, beautiful Virgin Islands, your qualities can never be denied. Good evening, brethren. Would you mind please stand for prayer? And Father in heaven, you guide and govern everything with order and love. Direct the minds and hearts according to your will.
Look upon the foundation members of the Lions Club of Petola, past and present, especially the founding member, Lion Leander Nibs, Melvin Jones Fellow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give thanks to God for all his benefits towards us. For the Lions Club of Tola, 45 years anniversary. And we welcome this celebration. Lord, bless the keynote speaker, Dr. Wayne A. I. Frederick, president of Howard University and the launching of public-private partnership. The Toll Alliance and Partners and H. Laverty Stout Community College. Lord, send your blessing on various studies center and heritage village. that this community project will be successfully committed. Father, we pray for the Lions Club of the Tola and the Board of Direction Directors and the Board of Directors of the Tola Central Club branch and their members. Father, bless the Lion President Calvin Maloon, MJF, and Lion President Otley Hodge. That God will give them wisdom and understanding to perform their duties to serve in helping the less fortunate. Father, remember the Honorable Premier, Dr. Rolanda Smith, and members of his House of Assembly. And former Honorable Premier, Brother Ralph O'Neill, leader of the opposition, and Honorable Andrew Foy, and Honorable Earl Fraser. The clergy, all the sick lions, especially Lion Doris George, Melvin Jones Fellow, and Lion Louis Walters, Melvin Jones Fellow. May God richly bless, bless him. May God richly blessings be upon them. Graciously be present, O Lord, and throw your loving arms around your people, cover them and bless them in Jesus' name. Lord, bless the food with thanksgiving. Bless the hands that prepared it. All these mercies we ask in Jesus' name. As thou hast taught us to say, Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive them that trust us against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy am the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you very much, Lion Halliday. I would now call on Lion Melissa Stout and Lion Jasmine Bass to share with you the Lion's Code of Ethics and the Lion's Club Objects.
And may I ask you to please stand again? Lion Code of Ethics, to show my faith in the worthiness of my vocation by industrious application to the end that I may merit a, a reputation for quality of service, to seek success and to demand all fair remuneration or, or profit as my just due, to, but to accept no profit or success at the price of my own self-respect, lost because of unfair advantage taken or because of questionable acts on my part. To remember that in building up my business, it is not necessary to tear down another's. To be loyal to my clients or customers and true to myself. Whenever a doubt arises to the right or ethics of my position or action towards others, to resolve such doubt against myself. To hold friendship as an end and not a means. To hold that true friendship exists not on account of of service performed by one to another, but that true friendship demands nothing but accepts the spirit in which it is given. Always to bear in mind my obligations, a citizen to my nation, my state, and my community, and to give them my un unwavering loyalty in word, act, and deed, to give them freely of time, labor, and means to aid others by giving my sympathy to those in distress, my aid to the weak, and my substance to the needy, to be careful with my criticism and liberal with my praise, to build up and not destroy. Thank you. Lions Objects. To create and foster a spirit of understanding among the people of the world. To promote principles of good government and good citizenship. To take an active interest in the civic, cultural, social, and moral welfare of the community. To unite the clubs in bonds of friendship, good fellowship, and mutual understanding. To provide a forum of open discussion of all matters of public dis interest, provided, however, that partisan politics and sectarian religion should not be debated by club members. To encourage service-minded people to serve their community without personal financial reward and to encourage efficiency, promote high ethical standards in commerce, industry, public works, and private endeavors, the Lions International Objects. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you. Fifty years ago, the Honorable H. Lavathy Stout had a vision for the British Virgin Islands. Part of that vision included a community college where the people of the territory could be educated and prepared for the future. Five years later, five other visionaries formed the Lions Club. They had a vision for how service can help to build the BVI that Mr. Stout visioned. This evening, we are here to celebrate the legacy of service. We are here to honor the visionaries, both the first chief minister and from whom the community college is named the founding members of the Lions Club, and their legacy continue, continues to live. We are all here this evening because of their vision and the fulfillment of their vision. George Santayana, in his book, the Life of Reason, written in 1905, said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. 
So this evening, we celebrate the vision of the founder, founders of the Lions Club, the first chief minister of the BVI, as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of ministerial government. We honor service, and most importantly, tonight we would like to ignite the spirit of service in the British Virgin Islands. Or shall I say, reignite the spirit of service in the British Virgin Islands. I think now more than ever, the British Virgin Islands needs us. It has done much for all of us in this room. Now it's time for us to serve the British Virgin Islands. So we gathered here to recognize those who have established the legacy of service, both at the HLS Community College and in the Lions Club. And it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you this evening to this celebration. I welcome you to this partnership between the H. Laverty Start Community College and the Lions Club. And we welcome you to join in helping to ignite the spirit of service, to reignite the spirit of service in the British Virgin Islands. With that said, I'd like to welcome a gentleman who I think if you were to look up the word service, his picture will be next to it because he serves with passion and commitment. He served as president of the Lions Club, I believe, four terms, three terms. I'm looking to the future, Mr. Malone. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Carver Malone, president of the Lions Club. I extend a pleasant good evening to everyone who have taken the time to be with us as we celebrate our 45th anniversary. And I'm aware that the mic or the speakers were not working at the time the head table um, was being announced. And I want to make sure that you appreciate uh, the wealth that we have, the resource, the resources that we have here. Um, Lion Marvin Grant is a member of the Tortola Lions Club and he has ascended to the highest post that you can have in the district as um, a multiple district 60 A and B council chair. That's after serving only a few years in the life. So he was the youngest council chair that we've had in the, yes, council chair and uh, district, yes, chair that we had. So. Give him a round of applause for. When you, um, let's see, you'll have to Google all that you need to know about Dr. Wayne Frederick. He has to leave tomorrow at seven because uh, he has an engagement and uh, that is with the president and at the president's um, ball, is it? Yeah, correspondence, dinner. So he's a guest speaker there. And um, in spite of that, we would have had this event on a Saturday evening. But if he says that he has to leave Saturday morning, well, we move us to Friday evening. So we'd like to thank him very much uh, as president of Howard University. His schedule and his travel schedule um, just leave you wanting. It makes me feel as if I'm doing nothing. So welcome again, Dr. Wayne Frederick. Too. <laughs> Honorable Premier Deolando Smith is no stranger to any of us except for 22 persons that have traveled from Washington and from Maryland and hail um, as invited guests of Dr. Gerald Stevens. And um, they met him last night, but our Honorable Premier of the Virgin Islands um, has supported lionism in all aspects of it um, ever since I, well, this is my 30th anniversary in lionism. Uh, so I joined in 1987, and um, when I look back through the years and the many photographs that I have, um, he's featured 
uh, in almost every one of them. Honorable O'Neill and Honorable Smith have um, been a fixture to the world of lionism and so too to the world of service. So again, welcome, uh, Honorable Premier. Now I did that only because the mic and the speakers were not working. And um, you would excuse me for being uncharacteristically short tonight. Number one, because my voice is just about gone, although it's uh, returning some. But number two, um, so many of you are not here to hear me. You're here to hear uh, the keynote address that it will be given. But I would particularly like to also acknowledge the families of those five lions who have served this territory and served it well. The families are here. We really honor and cherish the fact that they took time in being here. Uh, you will read more and you'll hear more about each of the honorees. And as we move forward, um, we'd like you to welcome the family of the honorees also. Thank you. Welcome. As president, when I um, accepted the challenge of being president for the third time, we were at the installation dinner and I noted that we had completed um, the restroom facilities at the Nori Lloyd Park back in uh, about five years ago, four or five years ago, we've completed other projects. Um, we've assisted the Health Services Authority in the ultrasound machine. As, in fact, um, Dr. Joel Stevens was instrumental in that. If you remember those of you four, five years ago, uh, the podium was turned the other way over here, but he had a brilliant presentation. And on our project anniversary, um, he was able to come forward with us and um, cause the ultrasound machine to be donated to the college, sorry, to the Health Services Authority. And again, um, it, was, it was my intention to make him an honorary lion tonight, but um, all of the certificates didn't come, but uh, it is in the making because uh, whenever called on, he has risen to the occasion. So him and his lovely wife is here now, and we like to make sure that we you know, do this. We challenged him to um, provide for us on our 45th anniversary a keynote speaker. And when he said that he's going to have Mr. Frederick, uh, Dr. Frederick join us, I say, well, um, you have created miracles before. You'll continue to do them. We were going to share the proceeds with the Health Services Authority and the college, but when I approached um, Dr. Janet Smith and asked her um, what is it that we can assist with, she mentioned um, two projects, one of which I would leave alone because I told her, no, not going to happen. And the other, she mentioned the um, Heritage Resource Center, which in fact was a, is a dream and a long life wish of, uh, well, long life, but since 1998 only. But Dr. Charles Wheatley, the chairman of the college um, in the Virgin Islands Studies Program, he envisions where you can have a well round knowledge of the Virgin Islands history. And the deputy chair, Sister Eileen Parsons, Honorable Eileen Parsons, um, have been with the college ever since, you know, ever since it started. And the fact is, is that the passion for imparting the knowledge of Virgin Islands history is all with them. And they have done all that they could to have the college accredited, uh, done all they could to have it uh, be the institution that it needs to be. And we're proud of the college and we will do whatever is possible to make sure that it succeeds from one year to another, one day to another. And and just like Harvard University, it will one day celebrate its 150th anniversary, which they will be doing this year also. We will hear a lot about the Heritage Village, so I would not go into that as much. But what I would like to say is that one of the goals that we've had is to make sure that um, I would not have to serve a full term 
Now, to do that, we had to expand our membership and make sure that the average age that we have um, could be brought down 30, 40 percent. And in so doing, um, Lions International, some years ago, in fact, Lion Grant is who brought it to the table, that, that there's this concept of a branch club so that um, when you have five or more members, you can start a branch of a, of a chartered Lions club. So what he did was, um, well, when he brought it to the table, he was uh, laughed out of the room because he said, well, what are you talking about? If you want us to consider this, go and bring the uh, constitutional proof for it. When he brought it, we jumped on it. We actually jumped on it one time. So we have to credit him for doing his research. But um, he was district chairman at the time, so he should have known. And he should have brought it to us earlier. So uh, while we credit him on one hand, we'll take it back on another. So the fact is, is that we, we met the challenge. And on, I think it was Thursday last, we were able to induct 16 new persons into the world of service. Now, that is a big deal. Of course, I wouldn't. <laughs> Dr. Stevens is laughing. Privately, I repeated the words of Joe Biden, but I will not do it here at the mic. So, the, um, so at the end of the day, um, with the service-minded persons that you have. In fact, um, I set them up a bit because I asked the directors of the Islan Henley Research Center to come and witness the induction. We asked um, persons from the Enid's Catliff Pre-Primary to witness. And we asked the Iris O'Neill um, home um, director to come and witness. Come and witness your new service ambassadors. Donovan, sorry. Um, so it is because lions have been known to um, assist the needy, be it from the family support network, be it from the uh, Donovan Center, or any of the institutions that are especially tied in, and we are pleased that the Honorable Minister of Social Affairs were able to uh, support this cause big because uh, each of the departments that he controlled, we have been assisting and assisting in uh, great ways. So we like to thank him for giving us the support that he had. But the fact is, is that um, as Kedrick mentioned, if we are going to build our community, then we have to make sure that service is in part throughout the communities by the persons in the communities. And in so doing, the works of Rotary, um, we call them our service partners. Though if you hear, um, well, I wouldn't go there. The fact is, is that uh, Rotary is a service partners and we would like to collaborate on a number of other projects with them and we will find ways in which we can um, look at the uh, Heritage Resource Center. So I'll set them up good. So when I come knocking at their doors, um, I will report back to you uh, during the installation of the new offices. So the fact is, is that this is a project that you can be pleased to support. Through this new team of people that we have brought on board, we know that lionism will live to be another 45 years. And as I say, up to 150 that um, Howard University um, have also. I'm not going to be long. I'm not a keynote speaker, but I'd like to say that Lion Leander Nibs <laughs> is here. He is one of the charter members. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, and do enjoy your evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Malone. Uh, I am one of those new recruits. I am a lion. <laughs> uh, I'm still trying to get used to the roaring. Maybe before the evening is over, I'll do a lion roar for you. But I, I would encourage other persons to join the Lions Club. I think I'm a fairly 
community-minded, service-oriented person. And um, I wasn't in a club for quite some time. But uh, Mr. Malone is my cousin. I have to see him on a regular basis. And he doesn't know the word no. So um, I thought that with this particular project, it was an important project for the community. And it requires a lot of resources, time, effort, and energy. And uh, I had the privilege of being the desk officer for Mr. Stout for the community college when Mr. Stout, I was in the premier's office at the time. And I was the desk officer for the community college and spent a lot of time with Mr. Stout in meetings. And I know the passion and the drive that he had to create this college. And I felt that if I can do something to help fulfill that vision, I should be obligated to do that. And those of us who, as I said, who have benefited from the BVI, we should all jump on board and try to help fulfill this important vision. Because our history, if we, as was quoted before, if you don't know your history, you're condemned to repeat it. With that said, I would like to invite the Honorable Premier, Dr. Deolanda Smith, to share some remarks with us. Premier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to acknowledge the um, president of uh, the Alliance Club, the, Mr. Kevin Maloon, uh, Mr. Grant, who's the other officer present at the table, and also the president of the Howard University, um, Dr. Fredericks. I'd like to also recognize the, all the members of the House of Assembly who are here, including, of course, the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Andrew Foy, and also the Speaker of the House of Assembly, Ms. Ingrid Moses, who also happens to be a Rotarian. It is indeed a pleasure for me to join in the 45th anniversary celebration of the Lions Club of Tortola and welcome Dr. Wayne A. Frederick, President of Hull University, to our beautiful shores. I had the privilege of meeting Dr. Frederick last evening at our um, president's home. I had quite a long conversation and it sort of um, took me back like 30 years when I was really active at People's Hospital when Dr. Stevens was helping out from time to time, a sort of um, nostalgia. But I really enjoyed the conversation and admired what he's doing in the United States. The Lions Club of Tortola is one of the territory's long-standing service-based organizations and has contributed significantly to the social fabric of our community. As a Rotarian myself, I consider community service to be one of life's higher callings with members donating their time, expertise, knowledge, and skills to better the lives of those in their communities. Lions Club International is no exception, and is recognized as the world's largest service club organization, which has made a strong commitment to community service and serving youth throughout the world through its Leo clubs. Right here in the BVI, noteworthy projects, including building the um, restroom at the Lloyd part of the park, as um, President mentioned a while ago. <clears throat> Primary school ice screening, special need games, Christmas basket project, and many other things. This evening's celebrations are truly memorable as we recognize and reflect on the combined achievements of the first five presidents of the organization, Mrs. Terence Erskine, John Wong, Sidney Bartwitt, Edgar Hewlett, and Samuel George, whose various tenures ran from 1972 to 1977. I want especially to acknowledge the families who are present with us. You understand the vision of service 
and supported them in their efforts to improve the wider BVI community through their work with the Lions Club of Tortola. For this I say thank you. Service to our fellow men is not always an easy task. It requires commitment, dedication, and sacrifice to purposely lay a foundation for the generation that will come after you. Tonight is also the launch of the public-private partnership between the Tortola Lions and the H. Lavity Stout Community College for the development of the Virgin Islands Heritage Resource Center. My government believes in this type of public-private sector partnership that will go a long way in preserving our history and in sharing our Virgin Islands story with our children. As Minister of Tourism, I'm pleased that we've had another added attraction for visitors to our shores that will also marvel at our culture. As our community becomes more diversified, I also envision that the Virgin Islands Heritage Resource Center be a great avenue to share a rich culture with new residents who have embraced the territory as their home. I congratulate the executive board and members of Lions Club of Tortola and the Leo Club on reaching this significant milestone. I also commend the president of the HRSC and our faculty for their work in partnering with Lions Club and this initiative to preserve our British Virgin Islands heritage. Dr. Frederick, the BVI is the sailing capital of the world. I encourage you, if time permits, to visit one of our beautiful sister islands while you're here at the return on vacation. I was telling him a little bit of the history of Jocelyn Dyke and other places and trying to get his interest going to ensure that he does return. I think I got his eye. <laughs> so do enjoy the rest of the evening and thank you. Thank you very much, Premier. We appreciate you being here and for the support. Uh, Mr. Malone, I think, um, you know, you have to make a little visit to see if there's anything behind the support, yeah? Check. We will now welcome the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Andrew Foy, to give us some remarks. I thank you very much. I greet everyone on the song of my voice in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As a matter of fact, I got a little late here this evening. And when I walked in, I really thought that I walked into heaven. Because I've never seen so much beautifully dressed ladies all in one place since I left home with my wife and daughters. So let's give the ladies a round of applause. They really look beautiful here tonight. Uh, I always tell the president of the Lions Club that uh, technically I'm a lion because uh, I was born in early August and I'm a Leo. <laughs> and since I roar a lot in the House of Assembly, I think I have qualified to be a lion. <laughs> I want to say that, you know, service is very important. I wrote out such a beautiful speech. And believe it or not, somehow it got away from me. And I realized that a lot really don't want me to speak from the paper tonight. He want me to speak from the hat. And since it's brief, and I'm known how to be brief, I'll get it done. Because service comes from the hat. You can't fake service. Anytime you join a service organization for the wrong reason, you end up quitting after a while. Because your objective was not pure. It was not about service. And one of the things that I learned in life, although still relatively young, is that life is not about your donation. It, it's not about your duration. It's about your donation. It's what you donate that counts. It matters not how long you live, but the quality of life that you live. It matters that when you close your eye, generations now and unborn can say, thank God that you existed, that you made a difference that you made sure that you didn't just exist, but you live, and live fruitfully so that generations to come can benefit. That is what the late Robert Lester Marley really meant when he said, you're going for tired for see my face, and you can't get me out of the race. He really means once you contribute to society in a way that you should, long after you're gone, even with him, 
your name will be called. Because every one of us I know is born to be great. It's just a matter of you living and bringing out the greatness that God has in you. The Tato Alliance Club has done this for many years. And they're standing on the shoulders of great men. Tonight they're honoring some of the five uh, past first five presidents. And let's give all of them a round of applause and their family for contributing. And we have Lion Terence Erskine, Lion John Wong, Lion Edgar Hewlett, Lion Sidney Bradford, and Lion Samuel George. Let's give them a round of applause. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Wayne Frederick, the president of Howard University, for gracing us with his, with his presence. I, yes. I, I, he, you know, last night we were to a function and, you know, there were a lot of Howard graduates and every time they mentioned them, they got a round and rounds of applause and then they mentioned me from Florida A&M. <laughs> Uh, which happened to be the rival school to Howard. And I remember many days long before he was president, I enjoyed going to Howard with a match in 100 because we would always um, beat them off. And people came to see the band and just happened to see a football game. <laughs> so that is um, the beauty of Howard. And, but uh, we always got along, and uh, Howard played a, a good role in the Virgin Islands because we have a lot of Howard graduates here. So we want to welcome you, Dr. Wayne, and you're a Caribbean man, so you're one of us. And we know this will not be your last. Uh, Premier, he was also telling me that he went to Anguilla, and he was very impressed with the beaches there and everything. So I told him that is only because you didn't get to see those here. Uh, no offense to Anguilla, but um, if, if I'll rank them a second distant 1B. So I want to welcome you, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you. I want to thank the college and the Lions Club for teaming up, because together we'll always achieve more. We have a lot to do in the Virgin Islands to make it better. And although we are separated fingers, we must operate as one as a hand in making sure that we make the Virgin Islands a better place, better than we met it. And once we live with that objective that we're going to make the Virgin Islands, we're going to make the world better than we met it, no matter what service organization we join, we're going to make sure that we move it from good to great because the excellence in us will come out. So tonight, I want to congratulate the Lions Club of Rotong and everyone for this initiative. God's blessings and thank you for these few words. Thank you very much, Honorable Foy. So Mr. Malone, you have a new member. He said he's a lion. You didn't hear him roar yet, but... Um... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we have dinner, which has begun, I'd like to invite you to join a raffle. Now, there are prizes. So let me tell you what the prizes are. We have a Samsung J7. Samsung J7. It cost about, in the BVI, about $360. And... It's one of the raffle prizes. We also have a Michael Kors watch. Yeah. It's value 236. We have a Michael Kors bracelet, valued at $90. And we have a manicure pedicure from Allure Day Spa. So, uh, Lion Jasmine has the tickets. How much are the tickets? I must decide. Mr. President, how much are the tickets? $5. So $5, you can have a Samsung J7. And the items are Lion Amaral. Where are you? There you are. She's walking around. This is Lion Amaral Newton, a new recruit of the Lions Club. Please give her a hand. So this is the Michael Kors Quartz Watch. And this is the Samsung J7. The Michael Kors and the uh, compliments of... A more. What's the jewel? Huh? So, 
the micro cores and the bracelet. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy J7 is courtesy of CCT. And the manicure, pedicure, courtesy of Allure Day Spa. So remember those businesses to support them. And um, please buy your tickets. We will have the raffle later on this evening. And you may look at the items to make sure that uh, you are tempted to buy not just one, but two, three, four, five tickets. Thank you very much. Tickets are $5 each. Yeah, thank you very much. And as you continue to enjoy your meal, we have a few items, um, which I don't think you'll mind if we, in the interest of time, um, proceed with. Also, we're going to have a shift in the program. So after the tribute given to the five honorees, what we'll have is that we'll bring Dr. Wayne Frederick to speak to you at the time. Um, so just a slight uh, adjustment in the program. As I mentioned before, um, Lionism in the British Virgin Islands started on the 27th of April, 1972. There were 20 charter members. And we've had um, two members before the passing of uh, their Lion Shirley. We've had two members who have continued with their membership for the 20, 45 long years. We have him here with us this evening. We are happy, we're pleased, we're privileged to have him here with us. He supports uh, the organization in every way that is possible. And it is with pride that we stand and recognize none other than our charter member, Lion Leandro Nibs. Thank you very much. Melvin Jones, uh, just about one, not just about, 100 years ago, he started the Lions Movement. And in recognition for stellar service to the community, um, there are those that are deserving, and they are awarded with the Melvin Jones Fellow Award. This is a special designation given to those who have shown exemplary service throughout their communities. We have a number of Melvin Jones Fellow that are here with us tonight, and we'll ask each of them to stand, all of them to stand, and be recognized. I'd like to thank you very much for your years of service, Lions. You may be seated. On the inside cover of the booklet, magazine, program, you will see a list of acknowledgments. And there were others that came in after. But the fact is, is that um, in each of the programs that the Lions put on, we have a body or a wealth of companies and individuals who, I'm not sure whether or not they're not allowed to say no, or they just don't say no. But when called on, they would always respond to the call for service and to the preparation for it without these kind donations and involvement by the community, by companies, and by individuals, we could not construct the 
no Lloyd restroom facilities. We couldn't construct the Queen Elizabeth II facilities. We could not donate to the Health Services Authority in terms of the ultrasound machines and the other orthopedic bed that we did. I didn't realize that a bed could cost so much, $70,000 for an orthopedic bed. Well, we have a house full of doctors, so I am, I am uh, they're amazed that um, I'm amazed. The fact is, is that uh, it is a worthwhile cause and um, it could only be accomplished with the kind support of all the companies and individuals throughout the years. The project that we have embarked on is in, the, well, it's making me sweat, is in the tone of 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars. So um, there are a number of initiatives that have been coming forward already. The president today announced that there were ways in which um, individuals intend on um, contributing to the hosting of um, different functions at the college. And I think that we will find ways in which this could be done. There are persons who are keen and interested in the preservation and inherited preservation. You'll hear more about it. But we like to give special recognition. We have listed most of the names here. When we have our promotion campaigns, the companies will be recognized um, in a even more pronounced way. And I think that we must acknowledge the fact that without this donation, we cannot call on government for every facet of the development and construction within the territory. So it is only through this way that we can accomplish all that we could. So give a round and round of applause for all of our contributors, our donors, to you yourselves who are, who are here today, and you can be encouraged to support and support more. I had the, um, had the privilege, and I just happened to be driving, so I was not eavesdropping, of taking uh, the president to the radio station this morning, and um, even while he was here, he was um, fundraising. So I think that it is a task... <laughs> It is a task that never stops. So um, he understands it very well, and uh, he will probably tell you more. But when he comes to this podium, he'll be raising funds for us as opposed to for Howard. So, Dr. Frederick, you're informed. <laughs> so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and um, we'll now continue with the program um, in terms of the um, awards to the honorees tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lion President Carbon Malone. Just to remind you, if you haven't yet, the raffle tickets are sold. If you haven't purchased your ticket, please uh, do so. The funds are part of the donation to the HLSCC Heritage Resource Center. I will now call on Lyons Heskett Newton and Lyon New, New Lyon, Mr. Natalia Wheatley, to come forth to recognize her honorees. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremony. For the call already established, pleasant good evening. Diane Terence J. Erskine. Terence Erskine, an insurance broker who migrated from Guyana to Tortola, was instrumental in stimulating interest locally in Lions Club International. Diane Erskine is credited with preparing the necessary groundwork of the organization, which culminated in the visit of the Lions Club District 60 officials, and eventually with the signing of the charter on the 27th of April, 1972. 
As one of the 20 founding members, Lion Erskine was naturally voted as the charter president of the Lions Club of Tortola and was scheduled to serve as such from April 1972 to June 1973. During the Lions International Convention in Florida in July of 1972, career opportunities soon became available and after six months, Lion Erskine migrated to Florida. He laid the cornerstone and today Lionism is alive and well in the British Virgin Islands. I wish to congratulate his family and thank you very much for his service. Thank you very much, Lion Newton. Unfortunately, the family of Lion Erskine could not be with us this evening, uh, but we remember them. So please give them another round of applause. I will now call on District Chair Lion Marvin Grant to come forward to present the other, recognize the other persons. Good evening all. We'll continue reading the rest of the honorees, the biogra biographies of uh, the other honorees, and then we'll proceed with the honoring. It is my honor and privilege to tell you a little bit about Lion John B. Wang. John Wang, a businessman originally from Guyana, became one of the 20 charter members to form the Lions Club of Tortola. Following the early departure of Lion Terence Oskine, Lion Wang was voted as the second president of the Lions Club of Tortola and served for 18 months, inclusive of the 1973 and 1974 Lionistic year. He was elected as Zone 2 chairman for the 1975-1976 Lions Year and Deputy District Governor of District 60 for the 1976-1977 Lions Year. As President, Mr. Wang attended five international conventions. After his relocation to Canada, he was later transferred to the St. Thomas Lions Club of Canada. Lion Wang was granted life membership on September 15, 1995. In 2000-2001, he was awarded the Melvin, Melvin Jones Fellow Award for his outstanding work in lionism. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. We now call on Lion District Rep. Marvin, to come and present the plaque to the family. So the representative, yes, thank you. The plaque reads, a testimonial of sincere appreciation presented to John D. Wong in honor and with deep appreciation of the distinguished and unselfish service given to the club while serving with outstanding leadership, vision, and ability as president of the Lions Club of Tortola, 1973-1974.
We will now recognize Lion John, sorry, Lion A.C. Hewlett. It gives me great pleasure to present a tribute to Lion Edgar A. C. Hewlett. Mr. Edgar Hewlett, a lawyer, originally from Antigua, was recruited as Attorney General and was one of the 20 charter members to form the Lions Club of Tortola. Lion Hewlett was voted as the third president of the Lions Club of Tortola for the year 1974 to 1975. He had a passion for youth involvement and his crowning achievement in the formation and charter of Tortola Leo Club, which is the youth arm of the Lions Club. As president, Lion Hewlett attended Lions International Conventions in Atlanta, USA, and during his years of service, adopted the theme, Lions, grid yourselves, we have work to do. I want to congratulate Lion Hewlett and his family for the service that this stalwart lion has left as a legacy to the Lions Club of Tortola. Thank you. We invite the representatives of Lion Hewlett to come forward, please. And the wording is the same on all of the plaques. We will now recognize Lion Sidney Bratwith. Mr. Sidney Brathwaite was the fourth president of the Lions Club of Tortola from 1975 to 1976. He held numerous offices within the club and traveled off island to attend zone meetings, regional meetings, District 60B and international conventions. Mr. Brathwaite was the recipient of various Lions Club awards, uh, President's Award, Lion of the Year Award, Treasurer's Award, and Committee Chair, Chairman's Awards. His signature pro project as president of the Lions Club was the surfacing of the basketball court at the A.O. Shirley Recreation Ground. Lion Sidney was, a very ded was very dedicated to the ideals of lionism and adopted the theme, Lions, a work in progress. Round of applause. We invite the representatives of Mr. Brathwaite to come forward. Thank you. We now rep recognize Lion Sam George. gives me great pleasure to present a tribute to Lion Samuel George. Mr. Sam George was the fifth president of the Lions Club of Tortola from 1976 to 1977. He held numerous offices within the club as well as Lioness Club Liaison Officer and Guiding Lion. Mr. Sam George was the recipient of various Lions Club's awards, President's Award, Lion of the Year Award, Zone Chairman Award, Committee Chairman's Award, Melvin Jones Fellow Award for Humanitarian Service, Life Member Award for his long and distinguished service in the Lions Club of Tortola. At district level, Lion Sam served as Zone Chairman, Zone 2A. He traveled extensively throughout attending zone meetings, regional meetings, media meetings, sub-district 60B conventions and multiple district 60A and B conventions and international conventions, namely 
New Orleans, Hawaii, Los Angeles, Australia, Tokyo, Miami, as well as Lions Club International Headquarters in Oak Brook, Illinois. For his extensive travel, he was known in the club as Traveling Lion. Lion Sam George was very dedicated to the ideals of lionism and adopted the team during his year. Make your fellow men feel needy. Lion Sam was a personal friend of mine. I surely dearly missed him, deceased. But I would like to congratulate his family for his Star Wars service in the Lions Club of Tortola. And may his legacy continue in the Lions Club. Thank you very much. Thank you. We invite the representative of Lion George. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Margaret Board. Thank you very much. Please give all of the honorees a round of applause. Thank you, Lion Whitley, Lion Newton. Before I invite Dr. Joel Stevens to introduce the guest speaker, I'd like to extend apologies from the Honorable Minister of Education and Culture, Myron Walden, who's unable to be with us this evening due to travel. And he sends his wishes and he looks forward to working with HLSCC and the Lions Club partnership to make it a reality. I will now call on a son of the soil. We actually grew up together in Fat Hogs Bay. Well, in the same time. He was a little bit in high school while I was a little snorty nosed boy. Anyway, uh, Joel Stevens, uh, as we know, I've been taught all of Joey. Your friends in Washington don't know Joey, do they? So please join me in welcoming Dr. Joel Stevens, who is a practicing surgeon in Washington, D.C., and is responsible for the presence of Dr. Frederick here with us and has brought many of his friends to share this most auspicious occasion with us. Dr. Stevens. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. I consider it a distinct honor to be called on to introduce a most esteemed guest keynote speaker tonight. But before I do that, I'd like to ask his indulgence, as well as that of Mr. Malone and leadership of the lines to depart for just a moment from the stated directive. I consider it a tremendous blessing in my life that I have so many friends in the home that I only live for a small portion of my life, but where my soul truly dwells, and that's here in the BBI. I just so wonderful tonight, I'm giddy seeing friends that I haven't seen and spending my time as if this event is, revolves around me. It's not about that, but I'm so happy to see my friends. But I'm also blessed to, um, to have so many friends abroad and who have been so supportive of me. So I'd like to ask my friends who have traveled so far to be with us tonight to stand and receive a warm BVI welcome from this group. Would you please stand? <laughs> And also, as Mr. Malone and I talked about this 150th anniversary of Harvard, which is a momentous uh, milestone when you consider the history of slavery and other conditions in the United States, this is a tremendous milestone. So 
an institution that has weathered this long. But we also were reminded of the connection of the BVI. We're a small country, but we've been connected to this milestone for quite a while. And I tried to research who was the earliest BVI lander to finish Howard. I couldn't get, but certainly the earliest I was told was the Dr. Thomas Georges, who finished Howard Medical School in 1922, 95 years ago. So, so those of us in the friends who think you are the first, as I thought I was until I, I, um, I saw that, we'll tell Johnny come lately. So thank you. So now to my director task. After graciously serving the university as interim president for more than a year, Dr. Frederick was inaugurated as the 17th president of Howard University on March 8, 6, 2015. I might in interject in that, that he's the first person of Caribbean birth or Caribbean heritage to be uh, president of this esteemed institution. <laughs> Dr. Frederick is a scholar, surgeon, and researcher. The focal point of his research is to narrow the disparity in cancer care outcomes between African Americans and the larger population, particularly in the area of breast cancer. Dr. Frederick is most grateful that his matriculation as a triple alumnus of Howard allowed him to commit himself to the mission of Howard University. A triple alumnus of Bachelor of Science and BSMD combined, and only a few of us, I wasn't in that group, I was able to achieve that feat in combining the Bachelor of Science and the MD degree, and then go on to have an MBA also from Howard. In alignment with the Howard University mission and a personal desire to influence change, Dr. Frederick remains active within local and global communities. In January of 2017, the Federal Reserve System Board of Governors, that's the Federal Reserve System Board, elected Dr. Frederick to the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond's Baltimore branch. In May 2016, he was appointed to the Board of Advisors for the White House Initiative on Historically Black Colleges and Universities, HBCU. Dr. Frederick was also appointed to the Board of Advisors for the White House Initiative on HBCUs to provide the President and Secretary of Education advisory support. Dr. Frederick has received multiple awards and accolades highlighting his successes and dedication to diversifying the fields of medicine, higher education, and service. Some of these include the National Association of Health Services Executive, the Congressional Citation for Distinguished Service, being named the 2015 Male President of the Year by HBCU Digest, and the 2014 Howard University Bison Pride Award. In 2013, Dr. Frederick was named Super Doctor by the Washington Post Magazine. Dr. Wayne Frederick is a true son of Howard, a proud and loyal exemplar of Howard University's motto, truth and service. I present to you Dr. Wayne A. I. Frederick. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me, let me first start by thanking um, Dr. Stevens for that very generous introduction, and I'd like to meet that person one day as well. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that. Uh, I had the opportunity today to spend some time at um, Cane Garden Bay, and I think I learned um, a little bit more about the British Virgin Islands, and I understand where Dr. Stevens' spirit of generosity comes from. Uh, so to the Honorable Premier, Dr. Smith, 
uh, president of the Lions Club, Mr. Malone, I certainly thank you for your warm uh, welcome, hospitality, and invitation here tonight. Uh, I have informed my wife and my 13, well, soon to be 13 year old son and soon to be 11 year old daughter that we will be back um, to visit. And uh, a, a couple of things, well, w one thing that I have learned about the British Virgin Islands is that the next person from the British Virgin Islands that tells me they're going to be brief, I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna believe them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a quick study, so with that in mind, I, I am going to be brief since my assistant had this on my schedule from seven to nine and I see that the hour is 9.56, so I'm working on minus 56 minutes. Um, I'm not sure how to go back and reverse time, but I'll do my best. Um, at, at the top of this, I'll, I'll also mention something else as well. My, my wife, I owe a lot to because prior to meeting her, I often used to say that I was a man of aspiration and not ambition. And what she has lent to my life and purpose um, has been invaluable. Part of that is controlling the purse strings. And so she informed me by text tonight after checking on some things, President Malone, that we would be making a donation of $1,000 to the Lions Club of Tortola. <laughs> and I appreciate the applause, but I'll pass it on to her because she does control the pushing. I wasn't kidding about that. As the 17th president of Howard University, it brings me great pride to join you this evening and share remarks on my perception uh, and perspective of Howard University's contributions and commitments to the development of the Caribbean-born students. Events like tonight remind us of the humanity and spirit of benevolence that exists in all of us. With just a few hundred miles of ocean water in between us and a long history that connects the Caribbean and Howard University, it has been and will continue to be imperative that we recognize and highlight the impact of Caribbean American residents. Howard University is an institution where freedom of thought choice and expression are ever present. And it is my firm belief that the journey of one's academic pursuit will always and should always be tortuous, at times uncomfortable, and certainly never convenient. This will ensure that students and faculty alike always gain insights into the variety of experiences of the human condition, the essence of which is engagement and not isolation. When the founding fathers established Howard University in 1867, it was clear that they wanted to have a cosmopolitan character. But let me tell you an untold story about Howard University. On March 2nd, 1867, the President of the United States, Andrew Johnson, a racist southerner, signed the charter that established Howard University. On that same day, he vetoed the first Reconstruction Acts because he did not believe that black men should have the same rights as white men. The irony in that cannot escape us. Fortunately, Congress on that very same day overrode his veto and the first Reconstruction Acts passed on the same day that Howard University was established. <laughs> Two years later, Howard University President Oliver Otis Howard, who was a general and lost his arm in a battle and for whom Howard University is named after and subsequently became our third president, wrote that drawing our pupils from all classes, conditions, and nationalities is critical. And that is what Howard University has always been about. In 1874, Eliza Clark of Barbados was the first student born in the Caribbean to graduate from Howard University College of Medicine. It would take some 11 years before the second student from Haiti would subsequently join the College of Medicine. And as you heard from Dr. Stevens in 1922, we had a graduate from the British Virgin Islands. Since then, many distinguished Caribbean citizens have chosen Howard University as their destination and with massive impact and massive effect. And I will just name a couple. The current Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. Mitchell is a graduate of our Department of Mathematics. 
But the person that I am most fond of and the person that also led me to Howard University is one Sir Eric Williams, who attended Oxford University in England, described Howard University as the black Oxford, and came to Howard University as a political science professor, where he laid the groundwork for what would then become a political revolution and lead to the independence of Trinidad and Tobago in 1962. When he subsequently died in the 80s, I remember sitting and watching my mom in deep despair cry over the passing of this man. And I came to understand the greatness of him and why she felt so fondly about Howard University. He sacrificed everything for the good of all of us. He built a healthcare system that would take a 16 year old, five foot six, 88 pound Wayne Frederick with sickle cell from birth to Howard University. That free healthcare, the quality of it, is why I stand before you here today. He also built an education system that would educate that same Wayne Frederick in a way that would prepare me to be able to conduct a matriculation in a rigorous six-year program, two years of undergrad and four years of medical school, and graduate at the age of 22 to become a physician. So with that in mind, I want to leave you with some important thoughts. The trials that we face today in our world are not new. And if we pay attention to history, they have been here before. What is different is the tools that we must use to overcome the challenges and the obstacles that are in front of us. While traveling to Johannesburg, South Africa, I saw a sign, a quote on the wall of the airport that read, if you want to go fast, you should go alone. And if you want to go far, you should go together. I think that principle is what underscores what the Lions is trying to do here in Tortola. Howard's university motto is truth and service. Howard University students come to Howard University to get didactic knowledge. But what really makes the impact is when they leave Howard University and change the world around them by applying the knowledge that they have obtained to the problems and challenges of today. But that is not fraught without difficulty. And let's be very, very clear, Howard University is a microcosm of the bigger world that we live in. And so I'd like to address that. There are three things that I think we often overlook. One is our people. Two are our institutions, and three are our resources. With respect to our people, we often wait for others to show us appreciation and to show us love. A prophet is often not heralded in his own land, and it is too often that we overlook the people who make the difference in our lives. And so I hope that the British Virgin Islands would take the opportunity tonight to recognize the work of the Lions and the men and women that participate in providing service for this great region, and also would recognize Joel Stevens, who I think is the ultimate diplomat. And let me tell you why. I have never had a meeting with Dr. Stevens, a conversation, or any type of interlude in which he was promoting, advancing, or asking for something for himself. Every single time I have interacted with him as a student, a trainee under him, and then subsequently as a university president, his entreaties to me have always been about someone else, often someone that I fully disagree with, someone that I don't think deserves his compassion or his loyalty, but he has always been steadfast in making sure that he has promoted those who are downtrodden. And for that, I want to raise him up tonight and make sure that we all recognize that he epitomizes what the Lions is about in terms of service. And although he's not a lion tonight, his role of service is one that we should all stand and acknowledge.
so. The Lions have been asked by Dr. Frederick to give Dr. Stevens a roar. So Lions, please stand. After three, one, two, three, roar, 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 bite him, bite him, bite him. I, I'm, 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 I'm happy that I didn't attempt that myself, <laughs> since my mom is a lion, and I, 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 don't, I wouldn't want to embarrass her. <laughs> the second thing I want to touch on is our institutions. And when I talk of our institutions, I'm going to mention Howard University and the British Virgin Islands. We often disrespect and disregard our institutions. And that is something that I take great umbrage with. These institutions make us. They take us in. They nurture us. They grow us. They give us the wings for us to soar. And as I told you my story, I went to Howard University in 1988 with a chronic illness, a sickle cell. And Howard University made me what I am today. I had a simple goal to become a physician and Howard University showed me surgery. I had a simple goal to be a good surgeon, and Howard University showed me the presidency. That is what Howard University is about, but my story is not an exceptional Howard University story. My section is a typical Howard University story, because there are many thousands of alum who can stand here before you and tell you the same story about Howard University, about coming from an under-resourced circumstance and having our Howard University lifted up. But too often, people are too comfortable disrespecting and disregarding our institutions, taking them for granted, saying disparages things about them. And what I would urge all of us to do is to make sure that we are thoughtful and mindful of that, and that we are in the business of uplifting and participating in solution finding, as opposed to tearing each other down. We often complain about the man, whoever he is. I'm yet to meet him, and I hope that I don't. What I do know is that I meet other people who benefit from our institutions, who don't show enough gratitude, who don't show enough love and self-respect. I tell my students when I lecture to them that the biggest hypocrisy that exists among us is that we practice too much self-hate. If I stand on the street corner of Georgia Avenue where Howard University is located in a pair of jeans, and it'll, there'll be rock and republic jeans for the young people in the room, a pair of Timberland boots and a hooded sweatshirt. And I had everyone in my classroom drive by me and I asked them to identify what it is I do and who I am. None of them would say he's a surgeon, university president, father of two, married to the same woman, living in the same house. And these are the students who look like me. These are the students who should have the biggest hope in me and they still are not at a circumstance where they can say that about me. So before we look for others to justify who we are and to uplift us, we need to uplift each other. And it's the same thing with the British Virgin Islands. You live in a region and on islands that are rich in resources, the first of which is the human resource, the second of which is a deep talent. The types of people that I have met here in the course of my life and over the course of the past 24 hours suggests to me that you have one of the greatest opportunities of any region in the world to expand what it is you do, to have the impact on the world at large that you should have. But one of the things that you must do is make sure that your gratitude and appreciation for who you are is felt far and wide. And the way you do that is by uplifting each other being supportive of each other, and making sure that you love each other. So as I close, I want to share two things with you that I live my life by. The first is that man's greatest imperfection is his passive acceptance of his imperfection. It is too often in life that we say that we cannot do. We say that we don't have the resources, we don't have the circumstance, and that is unacceptable. Since 
going to Howard, I have been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And you would think that someone with two chronic illnesses would be extremely bitter about the hand that life has served me. But I will tell you this. If I were to die tomorrow, I would have lived the richest life that any man on this face of this earth can live because I have been loved by a woman and two children in a way that no one would ever understand. And that, at the end of the day, is what matters most. The second philosophy that I have is that I obsess about the journey of life because there's no destination I'll come upon that will completely serve me. There's not a single award or position that I have held that has made me completely satisfied. What has made me lay my head down at night with complete comfort is that I have given my all to the journey of the day. So today while I was sitting at Cane Garden Bay and it was raining, I thought to myself that there could not be a more beautiful day at the beach than the one that I had today. And so I encourage all of you not simply to give to the lions of your treasure, but to give to the lions of, of your heart. Because the greatest emotion that anyone can experience in life is love. Not just love for oneself, but love for humanity. Thank you very much, British Virgin Islands. Thank you very much, Dr. Fredericks, for that very uplifting sage advice. Uh, we receive it with love, and we thank you for sharing it with us. And we are so pleased that you were here in the BVI, and the Premier has extended an invitation, and we look forward to receiving you back in the BVI. Thank you. Please give another round of applause. I must share with you that I have a special connection to Howard University. My youngest sister, Dr. Celeste Malone, is a professor at Howard. Okay. Lion President, we now move on to the public-private partnership, which is Labrador Star Community College. And we call on the line president, Carvin Malone, to take us through that. No, we don't. Um, we call on Dr. Janet Smith and Dr. Angel Smith to come and make the presentation. Dr. Angel Smith is not here tonight. Um, he had some surgery a couple of weeks ago. He's still recuperating. What he did do, um, what it does, he, he works. The last couple of days, he did come in and um, tried to put a video together. It's only six minutes, so you're not going to fall asleep, I assure you. Um, so I apologize for his not being here. I will say to you, though, that's a small office. The Institute for Virgin Island Studies is a small group of people, and there are two people here tonight. Um, Michael Kent. Mike, would you stand for me, please? That's Michael Kent. Mike's an archaeologist. Um, he knows more about what's below the surface of this island than any of us could ever imagine. He digs and he digs and he finds and he identifies and he researches. He tells us whose it was, when it was, and why it's where it was. Um, Kathy Smith is the other person who's here. Kathy, would you stand for me, please? That's Kathy. Kathy.
Kathy is passionate about the history of the BVI and especially about the accuracy and the interpretation and the perspective. I hear it every Friday. We spend some time together on Fridays and she's always correcting me on something that either I said or somebody else said during the week. So um, what I want you to do is take a few minutes and look at the film that Angel has put together to tell you a little bit about the background and why we decided and didn't have a lot of trouble convincing Carvin that uh, Resource Center for this community was what HLSEC wanted to do at this point, and it was quite near the top of our priorities. There's a secret between us. You heard it early. I'm not going to tell you what I asked for at first. Archaeological evidence suggests that the human history of the Virgin Islands dates back to 980 BC, the period when King Solomon was building the first temple in Jerusalem. The first Europeans to colonize these islands were the Spanish, who mined copper and virgin garda during the 1530s, followed by the English in the 1640s and then the Dutch in the mid-1600s. When the English returned in 1672, they continued to use the name the Dutch had given to the main island, Neo Tortolia, which over time became Tortola. What followed remains a tragic episode in the history of these islands, as thousands of enslaved Africans worked, bled, and died on the colonies' plantations to enrich the white planters and their families, many of whom lived lavish lifestyles in Britain. Records indicate that from 1754 to 1807, a total of 12,662 enslaved Africans were transported to the Virgin Islands. In 1834, when slavery officially ended, it was clear that in the Virgin Islands there could be no sugar without slaves. The colony's official economy collapsed as the sugar plantations became bankrupt. Thus, it was the farmer enslaved the people that guided, developed, and controlled the new economy, which was centered on raising cattle and other livestock, planting ground provisions for the local and export market. The last stand by the planter-led House of Assembly to regain control of the colony's economy by increasing the cattle tax in 1853 resulted in a full-scale riot in which Road Town was burned to the ground. The freed people were not afraid to fight to retain the economic independence. Later. Beginning in 1864, when the bankrupt estates were auctioned off, families pooled their resources to purchase the land on which they and their ancestors had lived and worked during the period of enslavement. Land ownership then became the most important goal for the Virgin Islander as it facilitated independence and self-sufficiency. As the export market with the Danish islands grew, so too did the local boat building industry, from which evolved a distinctively designed Tortola sloop. Similarly, Virgin Islanders also developed a unique culture that incorporated aspects of African heritage and adopted methods of survival, cooperation, and self sufficiency. The advent of tourism during the 1960s and subsequently financial services in the 1980s heralded a period of unprecedented growth in the Virgin Islands. This growth, however, was at the expense of the old traditions and customs that were important to the survival of the local culture. With this in mind, in 1998, the Virgin Islands Studies Program was created at H.L. Stout Community College in order to begin the process of preserving Virgin Islands history and heritage. The program has since evolved into an institute within the college that is dedicated to research and preservation of Virgin Islands history and heritage. The institute is the repository 
for historical artifacts recovered from local archaeological excavations and other curated items which includes rare books, journals, and paintings. Consisting of four full-time members of staff, the Institute is responsible for teaching courses in Virgin Islands history each semester and conducting ongoing research. Likewise, researchers and archaeologists make use of the Institute, which regularly provides assistance on research and restoration projects. The Lands Club of Tortola has partnered with H.L. Stout Community College to build the Virgin Islands Heritage Resource Center to house the Institute. The center will consist of classrooms and consultation spaces, offices, a dedicated library and archive, and storage facilities for artifacts. It will be on the main campus in the area presently occupied by the old Marine Sciences Building. The center will be designed to depict a traditional village and form part of the mill restoration project which was started a few years ago. In addition to a thatch house, a coal pit and a brick oven, a garden containing medicinal plants and crops, once vital to the Virgin Islands economy, will also be created. When completed, the facility will be a focal point for cultural and historical research. In donating towards this project, you will be ensuring that the unique heritage of the Virgin Islands will be preserved for future generations. Okay, so Angel, of course, is the major player in it. The other person I didn't mention was um, Jeff Brooks. Jeff isn't here tonight either because Jeff is responsible uh, for maintaining the sloops. He's also responsible for the marine um, museum, if you haven't been on the, mari on the, on the marine side of the college. Um, try to visit that if you, if you will. So with that, Kathy or Mitch, do you have anything? By the way, Dr. Wheatley, I don't know if we recognize Dr. Wheatley tonight. This is actually his baby. It's Mrs. Parsons' baby. It's been a long time coming, but you know, nothing gets to reality till the right time. And I think that now's the right time. So, the other person that's here is Ruben Vantapool. Ruben, where are you? <laughs> Brother Ruben is not officially part of our, our, our staff, but he's definitely a member of the team. The rock building, the stone building that's down by the abattoir, if you see that, that's always been... For, um, part of the project, and we're hoping that that would get incorporated in the village as well. It is intended to house the replica of a, of a sugarcane mill. So it'll take some time, so I, but I want to encourage you to continue to, to support it, continue to support the activities on our campus. And um, every time that you get a chance, I know you'll be hearing a lot about it, don't get tired of it. Um, but try to get involved as much as possible. That's our goal to make sure that this is a community project. Thank you. I'm hitting that all night. Before we continue, they, it was remiss of me, the Vice President of Student Affairs of Howard University um, is here. He's been here, and um, the airlines forgot um, his clothing. But uh, you know, he actually received it today. I'd like you to please stand and be recognized. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to do a a non-Howard activity and put you on the spot and come and say good evening to the kind people of the Virgin Islands. Uh, Melanie would not approve of this because she has everything on time. So sorry about the seven to nine deal, but you're on the islands, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Malone. Good afternoon, everybody. 
It is truly a pleasure to be here. Um, I was honored when Dr. Frederick asked me, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies, to come and spend some time here with him. And um, I must say, after being at Howard for about 14 months, it feels like home. And I tell you, it's uh, truly an honor when God has blessed you, as he pointed out, with uh, talents and gifts. I've been in the field for 28 years, and so now I feel like I'm home. You know, so. But truth in service, so. I applaud the Lions Club here in Tortola. Uh, it's in the spirit of the spirit of Howard in terms of uh, giving back to a community both of three things, of course, time, talent, and treasure. And so it's so funny in that Howard spirit, I said, well, the president once again trumped me because I said to myself, uh, Dr. O'Neill spent some time driving me around the island telling me about the history and so I felt on my heart to give $500. But I was just going to send it to him and say, give this to Mr. Malone. So I guess I'll announce that as well. So thank you and God bless. Thank you very much. The donations are coming in, Mr. President. I will now call on Lion... Marvin Grant, to share some remarks with us. After which we will have the raffles. If you haven't purchased your ticket, please do so now. Good evening. Good night. We've heard so much about being brief. I will assure you that I will do my utmost to, to do just that. President Carvin Malone, Honorable Premier, Dr. D. Orlando Smith, Speaker of the House, Ingrid Moses Catliff, other members of the House of Assembly, President of Howard, Dr. Wayne Fedricks, other distinguished persons seated in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I'm indeed honored to be here and to bring greetings on behalf of our international president, Chancellor Bob Carlew, and the Lyons family of Multiple District 60, on this momentous occasion. 2017 is a special year for Lionism worldwide. First, on June 7th, Lions Club International, the world's largest service organization, will be observing its 100th anniversary of humanitarian service to the world. Celebrations will be at our centennial convention in Chicago, where it all started in June, this June. Secondly, the multiple district 60 will be observing its 60th anniversary this May. Celebrations for this will be in Suriname, Paramaribo, Suriname, where Lionism began in the Caribbean region. And then, thirdly, the reason we're gathered here this, tonight, the observance of the 45th anniversary of the Lions Club of Tortola. Four and a half decades filled with, with a rich legacy of outstanding service to the BVI community a period which epitomizes our motto, we serve, and ensured that the Lions Club International purposes were met. I am therefore pleased to extend the heartiest congratulations to the president and members of this club on this milestone achievement. I also take this opportunity to pay tribute to the charter members, and in particular, the first five presidents. Special thanks to you, their families, for sharing them with us. These civic-minded men, like our founder Melvin Jones, whose personal motto is, you can't get very far until you start doing something for someone else. They saw the need to contribute to the improvement of this community by giving back in meaningful ways. And as it was said, they give of their time, talent, and their treasures. Their foresight paved the way for tonight's celebration and the club's long list of accomplishments. They are the foundations upon which the club's success, successes and achievements stand. They are the shoulders on which we stand. 
they are the shoulders on which I stand. And I noted that when the Lions Club of Tortola was formed, I was, not to give my age away, but I was just a toddler in the home country of the then uh, charter president. So 45 years later, here I am pleased to be serving in this capacity here in the British Virgin Islands. I must caution that due to the current global occurrences, however, the demand for services performed by groups such as Lions Club would only increase. So I want to encourage that we prepare ourselves to meet such demands and, to, and continue the delivery of the sterling work we are known for. On that note, I wish to sincerely thank the cooperate community and the people and government of this beautiful territory for the love and support given. Thank you for enabling all that is being celebrated here this evening. The Tortola Lions Club and all clubs in the territory ask for nothing less in their continued quest to meet the ever-increasing demand mentioned. Again, I say congratulations to the Tortola Lions on this wonderful achievement. It would be remiss of me not to extend warmest welcomes to Dr. Fredericks and his entire team for coming here to the BVI and sharing with us. Thank you, Dr. Fredericks, for enlightening us on how Howard has helped or contributed to the development of the Caribbean region and for sharing your philosophies of life. I also would like to say that now that you have tasted a little of nature's secret, well, not that I would like, we know that you plan to come back. Not only you, but all of you will come back and enjoy it to its utmost. Thanks to each and every one of you for coming out to celebrate this grand occasion with the Lions tonight. Do enjoy the rest of tonight's proceeding, and I thank you. Thank you very much, Lion Marvin Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the raffle. We're going to ask the Honorable Premier to select the first ticket. And the first prize will be the Galaxy Samsung J7. And the, um, before I call the winning number, uh, the prize is donated by CCT, so we want to acknowledge them for their kind generosity. And we will give you a certificate for the phone. You'll have to go to CCT. They will, have, they will provide a chip, and they'll register the phone for you. So don't be alarmed if you don't get the phone to take with you this evening. Just go to CCT tomorrow. The winning number is five. Zero Five zero five four two one.
we will ask Dr. Fredericks to draw the second, please. This is for the bracelet, the Michael Kors bracelet. Donated by Mia Moore Jewelers, located in the heart of Rotown. The winner is 505259. 505259. The winner, come forth, please. We'll ask the leader of the opposition, Andrew, Andrew Foy, to please draw the next winner. And this is for the Michael Kors watch. And the winner is five zero five three nine five. Five zero five three nine five. Five zero five three five nine. Sorry, three nine five. Lion Grant, can you draw the last price, please? This is for a manicure, pedicure at a low day spa, 505434. Five oh five four three four. Five zero five four three four.
Going once. Going twice. One more. That's me. That's me. I won. <laughs> yes. So I get a manicure, a pedicure, which I really need. I shall. Thank you very much. We now call upon the Honorable Premier to make a toast to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding as we raise a toast to Her Majesty. Toast to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. We now call upon the leader of the opposition, Honorable Andrew Foy, to make a toast to the Virgin Islands. This is a time when I wish I had one of those points from Honorable Prince Stout. Uh, we raise our glasses and we want to say to service to the Virgin Islands because let the service come from our heart because only what comes from the heart reaches the heart. Hear, hear. Thank you. We call upon Lyon, Marvin Grant, to make a toast to Lyon International. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, just raise your glass with me in a toast to 100 years of service, Lions Club International. Thank you. And we call on Lion Carbon Malone. Make a toast to the Lions Club. Sorry, toast to Lion District 60B, Lion Leandro Nibs. A toast to District 60B. And a Lion Carbon Malone to the Lions Club. A toast to the Lions Club of Tortola. Lions Club of Tortola. Thank you. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I would like to report that as a result of your generosity, that we raised $1,080 in the raffle. And that goes to the H.L. Stout Community College Heritage Resource Center. Thank you. And I now call on Lion Simon Potter to do the, deliver the vote of thanks. Lion Simon. Good evening, everyone. I hope the night is well spent. The hour is dry nigh. As, as Cromwell said, you're telling you the clock. But it was a good evening. So again, with the protocol already established. There's a whole long list to be thanked. A lot of people have made a lot of contribution to this evening, 
and especially because of the cause, which is supporting the Cultural Village and Heritage Foundation for the college. Again, it's a great cause, and we hope to keep coming to you and keep contributing, and we have a great village up at the college that we all can be proud of. Again, we want to thank uh, the, the Morins for catering for this function. The Morris Marina Inn restaurant in the room, MVW. We want to thank our decorators, Marilyn and her crew, Marilyn the Lion, and her crew for all the decorations. We want to thank our um, stems for providing some of the um, stems flower shop, some of the vases and so forth for our decoration. We want to thank the college for a whole number of events the college came forward, helped us print the booklet, the presentation you saw a while ago, um, and a whole host of other things that the college did for us to help put this joint effort together. Len Caffin, who employed a staff and had a team working around the clock for the last few hours to get everything put together and make sure everything is in place. And again, I've done a tremendous job. Len President, again, we want to thank you, especially for all that you've done. We want to thank everyone who took part in tonight's program. Uh, MC, Kedrick. Again, a very special thank to a special distinguished guest who have made a tremendous presentation for us tonight from all the way from Howard University. Again, Dr. Frederick, we thank you very much. And do come again. Again, our Honorable Premier for giving remarks and our distinguished Council Chairman, Len Marvin, the youngest Council Chairman ever in the region. Again, Len Marvin, thank you very much. And again, a special thank you to everyone who have participated in making this night what it was. And again, thank you all very much. And good night. Thank you. And finally, we call on Lion Holiday to deliver the benediction. While Lion Holiday is coming, we can't go without thanking mango man who have labored for 24 hours without sleep to make sure that the booklet was produced. So it was his fine work that done. And um, Michael Jack was special in terms of getting the, getting the uh, video put together, together with his team. Um, I think Dr. Ken, Dr. Angel, Dr. Catherine, the entire team up there did a fantastic work. So, um, there are too many people to thank, and they will be acknowledged in due course even more fondly. Thank you. Let us stand, please. Let us pray. O oh God, our mouth shall be filled with your praises and with your honor all day. Because your living kindness is better than life, our lips shall praise you. Lord, give us a safe journey to our homes. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Beat us all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for coming. And I call on Lion Carbon to lead us in the electric slide.